Hey guys, it's Glenn from the Functional Movement Club and today we're just going to go through my go-to lunge warm-up or really any single leg stability work that you're going to be doing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of foam rolling. <clears throat> so releasing off any of those tight tissues or sore spots. And so we're just going to start off with the calves, so from the ground up. And we're just going to roll up and down for the length of that muscle three to five times. So more just like a screen for you. You can go through, work the inside, work the outside, really just getting a feel for any tight or sore spots that you might have. And so once we've done a few sweeps, then we're just going to bend the uh, toes up towards the head, toes point down towards the floor. If you want to add a little bit of extra resistance, chuck the other leg on top and just pushing down into the shin and just help you get a little bit deeper into that muscle. So three to five sweeps, sweeping up. Three to five sweeps so until you sort of feel like it's released. Go to the inside, three to five, and just working out. So you're going to be spending about a minute on each side. Um, you don't want to be spending too much time, otherwise you're sort of just like wasting it. Uh, what you'll generally find is the most relief that you'll get will come in sort of that first minute where you're sort of more sending signals back to the brain just to sort of wake up, flush the area with uh, blood and then also waking up the brain to let it know that it's no longer tight and painful. So again, changing sides, pop the other leg on top, we're just gonna go through that three to five sweeps, and then we're gonna start adding in some movement. So, going down, down towards the bottom of the calf or sort of your soleus region is always a good one. You can work towards the outside of the calf or the inside of the calf. Uh, inside the calf more if you have flat feet. Uh, outside of the calf if you've had some uh, stability issues or you've rolled your ankles a few times. Cool. So after we spend about a minute doing that, then we're just going to go into some quads. So quads run from the uh, anterior superior iliac crest or sort of the bony bit at the front of your hip. If you're not that much of an anatomy geek. And then they run all the way down to sort of your knee joint or your, uh, your patella or your kneecap. So from there rolling up and down three to five spots, rolling on the outside, rolling on the inside, finding any sore or tight spots from the previous workout. Uh, I did squats yesterday, uh, so probably feeling a little tighter than they should. So if you like, you can spend a bit of extra time, but again, I wouldn't be spending more than sort of a minute at a time on each side for these. Adding in a bit of movement, three to five sweeps, just getting in, working in any of those tight spots. And again, like it wants to be like a three to five out of ten. So you don't want to be going through so hard that you're going red in the face, you're holding your breath, you can't have a bit of a chat to your mate or whatever when you're warming up. You just want to keep it at a nice comfortable level because that's what's actually going to give you the biggest benefit. If you're sort of tensing up or going too tight through these releases, then you'll actually be sending sort of those pain signals back to your brain and it can actually be doing the opposite of what you want and actually tightening up those muscles a little bit more. So. Sweeps, working up. Perfect. So once you've released off, chuck the foam roller out of the way. Then we're just going to go into what I like to call a pretzel stretch. So it's like an FMS thing or a great cook. And so basically, it's one of those stretches where you work in a whole group of different areas. Uh, so you might feel it in slightly different spots depending on what your tightest area is. So to start off, we're going to start laying on our side, you're gonna bend one knee up towards the chest, so the hips roughly 90, knees are at 90. Then from there, the other side, you're just gonna bring the uh, ankle up towards the bum. And then from here, we're gonna be pulling the knee up towards the chest. We're gonna be pulling that heel in towards the bum, and then we're gonna be peeling that shoulder down towards the floor. Once you get into this position, we're just gonna hold for a minute. So the reason why I love a stretch like this is it works on a few different tight areas. So depending on where you're tightest, you might feel this more through the front of your foot, through the front of your shin, through the front of your thigh, or even through your mid back region, or even your chest, depending on what is the tightest and what needs the most, uh, is taking out the most slack in that chain. So after we've released into that for a minute, you can let the leg go, let the knee drop down, switch sides, knee comes up, back leg comes up, 
pulling that knee in towards the chest, pulling that foot in towards your bum, really opening up that front of the hip capsule, and then also peeling the shoulder down towards the floor. So where about are you feeling this? Uh, that might be the area that's taking up most of the slack in uh, that oblique sling for you. So again, just spending a minute's time, you can try and add a bit of breathing in. So breathe in, as you breathe in, pull the legs up a little bit tighter, pull that shoulder down a little bit lower, hold for a sec, big breath in again, and big breath out, sink a little bit deeper into that stretch. So after you've held that for a minute, we're just gonna get up and we're gonna go into our calf stretch. Calf stretch, so you can do it any way you like. I personally just like to do it nice and simple. So we're just gonna find a box or a wall to lean against. We're just going to pop the uh, one foot on top of the other back foot. We're going to try and push the heel in towards the ground. And we should just be feeling that through the back of the uh, back of the leg, back of the calf. Depending on where you're tightest, so this will be sort of more um, of your calf complex, the upper calf. If you particularly get tight through the Achilles, then you can add in a bend of the knee and that will sort of target more of your lower calf complex. So again, we just want to be holding this for one, one side each, uh, one minute each side, sorry. And then once we've held it for a minute, we can change over. Or alternatively, if you want to hit both, you can do sort of 30 seconds in each position and then change it up. Really, you can uh, choose your own adventure on this one. So after about 30 seconds, probably a little bit longer, um, we can sink that knee down and go into a bit more of a calf stretch. Oh, sorry, soleus stretch, so lower calf. And we'll come back. Then it's time to start getting some activation going. So I like the single leg glute bridge because it's going to be sort of teaching the right muscles to be working. So, for the single leg glute bridge, we've got a couple of different variations we can do. You can either do holding onto the front of the knee, which will be your easier option, or we can do a little bit of hip flexor slash core activation, where we're just pushing the hand to the knee and the knee into the hand. So I like this one, it gets a bit more challenging, it gets those sort of car activations going. We're just gonna push the hand into the knee, knee to the hand, squeeze the bum, lift your hips up in the air. So we're gonna do 10 of those. to the other side. So the reason why I like this type of exercise is because it gets muscle coactivation going. So whenever we're working on any single leg stability or strengthening type drills, we want to be getting sort of the glutes on one side and the core or the hip flexors on the other side working into or working together, sorry. Uh, and that's going to help keep us in a nice upright position and it's going to keep us nice and stable. And once we've done that, we're just going to go into a couple calf raises. So from here, you can do it sort of standing and work on your balance, or if you're struggling, you can grab a wall. So we're just going to lift one leg up. We're going to go up onto our tippy toes. We're going to come back down. So we're just going to do 10 of those. And then this will also be working through a little bit of big toe mobility for you as well. So if you find that you get sort of painful through the toe, uh, or the back foot whenever you are doing any lunging type activities, then you might just want to be working on a bit of big toe mobility. It's um, a massive player as well in terms of glute activation uh, and the whole gait cycle. So once we've done 10 of those, we can go through, we can do the other leg. Good, then we want to start switching on that core as well. So I love the farmer's carry for this. What you do is we're just going to pick up a relative weight, uh, something where you can control it, but something where you also feel like you're getting a bit of a workout. So for farmer's carries, we're going to roll shoulder blades back down. We're going to make sure that the kettlebell is all the weight just off the uh, thigh. And then we're just going to go for a 30 second wander on one side. You can turn around, coming back. So a couple of things we want to make sure as we're going through this motion, that we're maintaining that nice upright posture, the ribs aren't flaring, we're also not swaying from side to side, 
as we go through and we do this movement, we want to get our core engaged and we also want to just be loading up that single leg stance. Once you've done 30 seconds, we'll do the other side. So again, shoulder legs back and down, keeping that chest up nice and tall and proud, but also keeping the ribs tucked while we're going through. We're just gonna walk for 30 seconds on the other side. So hopefully you have a slightly bigger space to do your farmer's walks. Uh, I normally do it lengthways through the clinic, but it's uh, hard to videotape it going all the way around. Good. So once you finish with that, we can pop the kettlebell down. Then from there, we're just going to go into some lunge iso holds. So we're just going to go down, we're going to set up in a good lunge position. So we're going to go front knee or front hip bent to 90, front knee bent to 90, back leg's going to be nice and straight. From there, we're just going to tuck the toes under, we're going to lift up a centimetre off the floor, and we're just going to hold that position for 30 seconds. So. The reason why we want to be accumulating some time under tension is A, it gives you a bit of time to sort of get the right muscles activating, but it also gives you a bit of time to think about what you're actually using, what you're feeling as you're going through the motion. You're not just like doing the reps for the sake of doing the reps. So we're just gonna hold for 30 seconds. It'll be pretty brutal by the end of it if you're doing it well. Uh, you wanna make sure you're not bending too far forward. You maintain that good, nice upright posture. Then you can drop down. We're going to change to the other side. So again, just working on that setup position. Usually if you start in a good position and you finish in a good position, your body will figure out how to get in between those two. So front hip bent to 90, front knee bent to 90, back hip is open up at 180 degrees, and we're just going to go into a 30 second ISO hold. So the other thing you want to make sure is as you do it, you're not arching your back too much. You want to keep that core engaged like we use the uh, farmer's carriers to start us off with. And we're just going to hold for 30 seconds all up. And should feel a little bit of a burn. You're also sort of waking up all those tissues, getting them used to the movements that you're about to be recreating. Good. Then we can just go into some single leg stability work. So a couple of single leg squats. So just do them to a box if you haven't done a lot of single leg squats before. We're just going to pop leg out. We're just going to bend down. We're just going to start loading up those glutes a little bit more. So a good idea is when you're doing like any like squatting activation or squat warm ups, you want to sort of have something to reach towards gives you a bit more of a target. So that way you can reach back with sort of say your hamstrings as opposed to your bum. It'll keep you a bit more upright and it'll make sure you're loading up your posterior chain rather than reaching out with the back, arching the bum or just sinking forwards into that front foot. So now that we've got everything warmed up, we just wanna go through a bit of movement patterning. So we're gonna pop that down into our lunge position from there getting that nice set up. We're just gonna finish in that nice position. So as we come up, we wanna make sure that we're traveling straight up, almost even just a slight bit of pressure into that front foot, but we definitely wanna make sure that we're not arching back or leaning back too far, putting stress through our lower back. So you can just go up, pause at the top. If you feel a little bit unbalanced, you can wiggle your feet a little bit wider, so they're just outside of hip width apart. Come back down, that'll increase your base of support. And we're just gonna work through the starting and the finishing positions 10 times on each side. Again, getting an appreciation for what the movement's meant to feel like, starting, finishing in good positions, so then your body knows how to get there and how to work through it. <laughs> Again, other side. Starting in a nice position, hip bent to 90, knee bent to 90, back leg stays straight, driving up, down, up, pause for a sec, come back down, and really just getting a feel for what your lunge is meant to feel like. Couple more. And we should 
should be ready to go out and lunch. Um, if you like the videos, please subscribe. Make sure you're keeping up to date with all the latest ones. Or alternatively, if there's any exercises you'd like to see us warm up, please shoot us a message.